In 2005, the Disney original live-action feature-length film Sky High was released, starring Kurt Russell, Kelly Preston, and Michael N. Garano. Sorry for butchering that in advance. The film was considered a success both critically and commercially. This film was a favorite of mine as a kid. It was clearly Disney's attempt at recreating Harry Potter or X-Men, and I believe it went above and beyond just a cheap remake. The idea of a superhero high school was something Disney had wanted to pursue since the late 90s, but the screenplay for the film was given to the creators of the hit Disney Channel original series, Kim Possible, Bob Schooley, and Mark McCorkle. They were originally working on a Kim Possible live action film, but even though that project never went through, Disney executives liked the script feeling like the characters were relatable to a teenage audience, so they reworked it into what became Sky High. It seems it might have been originally planned to air on the Disney Channel as an original movie, as that is what many of the cast members were led to believe while filming. But it had a full theatrical release in July 29th, 2005. The film was directed by Mike Mitchell, and although it was a success in the box office, it seemed that Disney was unsatisfied with his performance, likely due to its close release to Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory in the same year. And although the future seemed hopeful for a potential franchise, with plans of a sequel and even the entire cast but Kurt Russell and Kelly Preston signing up for a TV spinoff, none of this would come to fruition. I can't begin to explain what a major disappointment this is. As a child, I absolutely loved this movie. I had it on DVD and I'd watch it all of the time when we went on road trips. Not only is the cast filled with brilliant actors like Kurt Russell, Kelly Preston, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and Bruce Campbell, and even the original Wonder Woman, Linda Carter herself, but the film established the universe of Sky High so well. Warning, if you haven't seen the film, I would recommend you watch it if you have any interest in it whatsoever. From this point on, there will be spoilers about the plot of the film. Sky High is set in the fictional world where superpowered teenagers are taught to control their powers responsibly at a floating high school called Sky High. Will Stronghold, portrayed by Michael Angarano, is the son of two of the most decorated superheroes, the Commander and Jetstream, portrayed by Kurt Russell and Kelly Preston. It's his first day of school at Sky High, but he's secretly been hiding the fact that he has yet to develop superpowers powers from both of his parents, giving the impression that he had inherited his super strength from his father. Will and his best friend since childhood Layla, portrayed by Daniel Panabaker, make their way onto the bus where they meet the bus driver and other freshmen. The bus proceeds to transform into an aircraft that flies them to the campus of Sky High, which is a floating platform that moves locations so supervillains can't track down its location. The freshmen are taken to the gym where they learn that Sky High divides their students into two groups, heroes and sidekicks. I believe the preferred term is hero support. Based on what their superpower is, the gym coach, Boomer, portrayed by Bruce Campbell, calls them one at a time and evaluates evaluates their powers and places them accordingly. Layla, who has the power to control plants, refuses to use it. To participate in this test would be to support a flawed system. And so Boomer places her with the sidekicks. When Will reveals that he doesn't have any superpowers, Boomer places him with the sidekicks as well. Will later learns from the nurse, while most people inherit their powers from at least one of their parents, some superpowered couples can have children with no superpowers. Will begins taking classes as a sidekick, where he meets new friends and his teacher, who he learns used to be a sidekick for his father, the commander. Eventually, he has to confess to his dad that he's a sidekick, and that he doesn't have any superpowers. While his father and mother come to accept that the fact that he may never become a superhero, the next day at school, Will inadvertently gets into a fight with the son of a villain that the commander put in jail, War and Peace, played by Stephen Strait. During this fight, Will discovers he does indeed have super strength. His father and him celebrate, and he switched to the hero classes and begins to gain popularity. As the homecoming dance approaches, Will begins spending time with a senior technopath named Gwen Grayson, played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who he's had a crush on throughout the entire movie. He takes her home for dinner on the night where he's supposed to meet Layla, and she begins schmoozing the commander and Jetstream to convince them to accept an award at the homecoming dance as they reminisce on their old yearbook. They accept, and at the end of the night, Will and Gwen agree to attend the dance together. Together. Meanwhile, Layla gets stood up at the Chinese restaurant that Warren works at. They begin to talk, and Layla confesses to him that she's always had a crush on Will. Warren convinces her to act on this and ask him out to the dance. The next day, Will apologizes for standing her up, but before Layla can ask him to homecoming, 
Will confesses that he's taking Gwen. This obviously crushes Layla. When Will asks what she was going to tell him, she makes up that war and peace and her agreed to go together. This obviously sets Will off because the two have been beefing the entire film. This drives a rift between Will and his sidekick friends, which crescendos when Gwen convinces Will to allow friends over to his parents' place while they're on a mission for a few hours. This obviously turns into a huge rager, and Gwen convinces Will to let them sneak into his father's top secret sanctum, where they share their their first kiss. Meanwhile, Layla notices his house is lit up, so she investigates only to be found by Gwen before Will can talk to her. Gwen tells Layla that Will wants nothing to do with her, and Layla storms out. Before Will can explain, Layla tells him that, that they deserve each other and runs off. Will realizes that Gwen said something to her, and he dumps her on the night before the homecoming. The night before the dance. Sorry, Gwen. I, uh... Just did. But his parents arrived just in time to bust him. On the night of homecoming, the commander and Jetstream head to Sky High to accept their award. While Will stays home looking through his father's old yearbook, he realizes that one of his parents' classmates looks exactly like Gwen, and sees that the pacifier, a souvenir from the commander's greatest victory, is missing from the sanctum. Will realizes that Gwen must have manipulated him into stealing it, and makes his way to the homecoming dance. However, it's too late. As Gwen reveals her evil plan as royal pain, she uses the pacifier to turn all of the superheroes in Sky High into babies. However, Layla Warren and the sidekicks manage to escape and defeat Royal Pain's goons. Layla learns that Royal Pain's plan is to reverse the anti-gravity that makes Sky High float and fall and kill everyone, and so the sidekicks devise a plan to stop this. Will confronts Royal Pain, believing Gwen to be the daughter of his parents' old classmate Sue Tenney. However, she reveals to him that the explosion from the pacifier turned her into a baby, and she was raised by her underling Stitches, played by Jim Rash, to enact her revenge on the commander by raising an army of supervillains. Oh my god. I mean, I was an old lady. Will and Royal Pain begin to fight, and Layla and Warren make it just in time to see Will get thrown out of the school. However, just in time, Will reveals he has inherited the power of flight from his mother as well, and he uses this to defeat Royal Pain. However, as they are celebrating, Gwen secretly activates the device that turns off the anti-gravity. The campus begins falling and Will flies beneath in an attempt to stop the fall. The school narrowly destroys a newly purchased house, but the sidekicks manage to deactivate Royal Payne's device just in time for Will to catch it and carry it back into the sky. The film concludes with all of the babies being turned back into adults and Will's parents coming to appreciate the sidekicks. I mean hero support. The commander says to call them what they are. Heroes. The last scene is everyone enjoying the homecoming dance and Layla and Will being established as a couple. Will and Warren become best friends and Royal Payne and her goons are all locked up in prison. As someone who loved this film as a kid, hearing about all the prospective plans that Disney had for it really breaks my heart. Director of the film, Mike Mitchell, said, Except for Kurt Russell and Kelly Preston, every actor signed a contract to make it into the show. That was going to be Disney's plan. But what happened was, when it came out, it was kind of an underdog and no one knew about it. Also, it came out against Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the Tim Burton Johnny Depp one, and then no one knew that March of the Penguins, a documentary, would become the hugest family film of the time. He added, if you remember at the time, comic book fans were into the jokes. There was the Ben Stiller mystery men and people were like, no thank you. My super ex-girlfriend, that was another. A bunch of parodies were happening and comic book fans were not into it. And I think that with Sky High, they could tell that we love comic books and we're just having fun in the world. I'm so thankful that everyone noticed. I will say as someone who was a child during this era, I definitely saw Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and March of the Penguins in theaters. But I only really became familiar with Sky High because my parents bought it. To me, everything that Mitchell said is true. Sky High doesn't just feel like a parody of the genre, but a true homage to all the things we love about superheroes. And it feels original, not a lazy attempt to recreate Harry Potter or X-Men like other franchises have felt. There are details that make this world fun and potentially interesting to explore. I love that all the characters wear the same colors throughout the films. It feels like a perfect blend of superhero costumes and a normal high school wardrobe from the mid-2000s. Which adds a lot to the expression of the film. I also love all the scenes where they show class assignments, most obviously when they play Save the Citizen in gym class. This seems like a lawsuit waiting to happen, but it's like superhero version of Dodgeball or something and I absolutely love it. These are the moments that make the film feel like it could support so much more than just a standalone. 
and I can see where Disney had plans to make an entire TV show. I would have loved to see them delve into some of the other characters, particularly War and Peace, whose mother and father fought against each other as superhero and supervillain respectively. I feel like where the movie falters most is what it doesn't show. I would have loved to see some sort of sequence between Warren's father and the commander. It was told to us in the movie, and I felt like it would have been a perfect opportunity for a flashback or something. But there's no conversation about it despite Warren becoming Will's best friend at the end of the story. You'd think there'd be some kind of reconciliation between Warren and the commander since he imprisoned his father, and that was a major grudge Warren held towards Will throughout the movie. I also feel like there was a huge missed opportunity in just allowing Will not to have superpowers, or reveal his superpowers were different from his parents. While his parents do come to accept him despite not having any powers, this problem is almost immediately irrelevant as soon as it's resolved, and it feels a little cheap. Will's sidekick friends are also utilized appropriately, but felt like there could have been a lot more depth to their character. Magenta and Zack, played by Kelly Vitz and Nicholas Bronze, respectively, had a subtle romance throughout the film that was played mostly for laughs. Ethan, portrayed by DJ Daniels, gets the most minor role, but he does get a moment where he outsmarts his bullies during Homecoming. Overall, I think the exciting and colorful world that was created is what kept me coming back to the film, but after finishing it, I always felt like there was so much more to explore. So, could Disney bring it back? Well, according to some sources earlier this year, Disney may be eyeing Sky High for a potential reboot. I think that that definitely would be possible. I'm not sure how much of the original cast would be on board for this. Of course, the unfortunate passing of Kelly Preston makes the full return of the Stronghold family impossible, but I think that it would be good to pay respect to her and the character she portrayed. Mary Elizabeth Winstead was asked about Sky High and where she thinks her character could go from where it ended in the film. I think she's still operating as a supervillain for sure. I don't think there was any like moral, you know, like reassessment for her of her actions i don't think so <laughs> and now i think it's really kind of had some staying power because more generations have like picked it up and, and seen it and loved it and i love that because I, I kind of feel like it was a bit of an underrated movie um when it came out so i love that people are still watching it i do hope if they make some sort of reboot that they can come up with most of the original cast and update them to the modern day perhaps seeing will and layla sending their child to sky high for the first time honestly if they did this it would fulfill a lot of the dreams i had from my childhood my only hope is that they would be wise enough to bring back mike mitchell to direct and hopefully writers bob schooley and mark mccorkle i also hope they remember the amazing soundtrack that came with this film which was filled with covers from 80s music and i think that that would be a brilliant thing to bring back i know a lot of people interpreted the ending as the system of dividing students into heroes and sidekicks would have ended, but I don't actually believe this would be the case in universe. It seems like superheroing is sort of a career. Their intention on separating students is to capitalize on the efficiency of how superheroes and sidekicks are established. Mr. Boy mentions that he does freelance work, and it's implied that teaching at Sky High is more of a profession for retired or washed out superheroes who can't really keep up anymore. I think there must be a much larger system of how superheroes function in society, potentially Potentially even laws that they must follow, and maybe even some sort of league you, you have to apply to when you graduate and are assigned a hero slash sidekick. Basically what I'm trying to say is, Disney if you hire me I will help you develop this series. I'm just kidding. What I really mean is that the potential for Sky High as a franchise has always been incredibly high and that Mary Elizabeth Winsett is dead on about it being very underrated. There are a lot of incredible actors, most of whom I didn't even get to name in this video, like Cloris Leachman and Dave Foley. So I really feel like if they can recapture the essence of the film, put as much effort into the world building and characterization and casting, it doesn't really matter what they decide to explore in a potential reboot. I think there is a question to how much relevance there is to this film from the mid-2000s that underperformed by Disney's own metric. But I think it's just a matter of how they approach it. I think if they do a good job, there will obviously be potential to pick up a whole bunch of new fans, especially now that the superhero genre of film is pretty much mainstream at this point compared to what it was when the film was released. I think if they'd released Sky High during the height of the MCU DCU era, it would have been a lot more successful as a family film in theaters. The market for this kind of film is a lot larger now, obviously. So this leaves me hope for the potential future of the franchise. If you guys like this video, please go ahead and leave a like, leave a subscription, and tell me what you guys think about this underdog Disney film. I would love to make more videos like this in the future, so if you have other Disney films you want me to review, please just go ahead and suggest them. I'll talk to you guys all in my next video.